All right, welcome everybody to the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show, coming to you live and direct from Ottawa, Tennessee, in the den of the Owl's Nest area here in Ottawa. Thanks for watching, everybody. We've got a great guest lined up for you. Now, what I'm going to do right now, we're going to go behind the scenes. Tina, I bet you're still there, aren't you? Okay, what I want you to do, I want you to hang up the cell phone. I'm going to call you back on Skype because I figured out what the problem was, okay? Okay, so go ahead and hang up and I'll call you in just a moment on Skype. All right. See, that's, that's the beauty of this. We know what we're doing. Hey, I'll remind everybody that um, we're brought to you by the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop right here in Ottawa, right off of I-75 on exit 11. So if you're on I-75 heading north, get off the exit, turn right, uh, go to the red light, turn right again, look to your left, you'll see us. If you're heading south, you get off the exit, it's a real long off ramp, got to be way, way down there. And when you get to that red light, you turn left, go back under the interstate, Look to your left, and then you'll see it right by my Midnight Oil service station. If you're traveling in the area, stop and see us. We'd love to see you. We're there all day, 8 to 5, every day, Monday through Friday, 8 until 4 on Saturdays. And if you're a local, come on. You know where we're at. Come on and see us. Um, I'm, I was running really late today. I sold a, uh, a Green Mountain Grill, and I was helping the, the young man get, get familiar with it and uh, a lot of stuff going on, but we're here, and we're this is this is going to be a great show. So just stay tuned. Our broadcast partner, as always, is Backyard Smokers Barbecue on Facebook. This forum is tremendous. No politics, no BS, just plain good barbecue discussion. Backyard Smokers Barbecue, and I want to thank Jeff Maxwell. He's back at the remote studios of Al's Nest Barbecue, also known as his house monitoring the chat so everybody jump in and join jeff and we're getting ready to call our guest here just a minute you're going to get to you're going to get to watch live live television so stay tuned here this is going to be just a lot a lot of fun here okay so hang on we are going to do this because we can so hang on just a second i bet she can hear me now I heard you before. Hey, I can hear you. I can hear you, Tina Cannon from Noonan, Georgia, the champion of American Barbecue Showdown. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? No, I do still you, can't believe it. Do you still wake up in the middle of the night going like this? Oh, yeah, and it was and it was a year ago. I know. How did you hold it in? How did, how did you not tell people? I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have done it. I had to for, try to forget about it. Was it just is it the most exciting thing you ever went through? Because you're no stranger to television barbecue. <laughs> We're going to go over um, that too. I would say it to, to date, yes, it's the most exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, Tina Cannon, direct live on the Owl's Nest barbecue show from Noonan, Georgia. Now, first thing we do, Tina, and I know you watch the show every Thursday. So we get up, so we, we get a, uh, what's that thing behind you, the big stairs? Does that go up to your attic? Oh, that's my loft. Oh, okay. I keep, I keep secret cooking secrets. Oh, there. okay. I didn't know you could see me. I better. Ooh, yeah, I, yeah, we can see everything. Uh-oh. <laughs> my mom over there. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> You know, with the technical issues I was having, I was like, I didn't know you could see me. I'm glad I don't have my jammies on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Kind of early. Um, you know, I got to run to recover from mom on the bed there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Noon in Georgia. Um, of course, you know, I always like to talk about famous people from where you're from. All my guests okay, are from. Jackson. But would you think, you think he's the most famous person from Noon in Georgia? You know, there's a lot of people from your town, which is located southwest of Atlanta because everything in Georgia depends on its location to Atlanta, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to the airport from where I live. I live in West Newman. Mm -hmm. Is at least like, I think it's 55 minutes. 
Yeah, you live on the right side to go to the Atlanta airport, though. You live on the easy side to get to it. Depends on how you look at it. Yeah. I hate traffic. I well, hate traffic. Well, you, now, Alan Jackson, he, of course, uh, for all of our friends who may not know Alan Jackson, but listen to music, he wrote Five O'Clock Somewhere, where I come from, my all-time Alan Jackson favorite hit. Yeah, that's a good one. And uh, he wrote all those Hat and Boots songs. But the most famous person from Noonan, Georgia, is not Alan Jackson. Yeah, it's a comedian, right? Well, he's not a comedian. You're thinking you're we're going right that we're going down the right path. Okay. He is my personal journalism hero, one Louis Grizzard. Louis, yeah. Yes. Yeah, a comedian, right? Yep, writer and a humorist. Um, uh, he he worked at the uh, AJC for a long, years and years and years. And before that, he worked in Chicago, and he said the most famous, funniest thing ever. He said the best thing that's ever come out of Chicago was I-55. <laughs> that's <laughs> that, probably right. And that, that was Louis, Louis Grizzard. Bless his heart and bless his soul. Tina Cannon, I've got your, I've got your bio pulled up uh -huh. here from the uh, WFC site. And... Um, it's, I don't know how they condensed it into this small little thing because your accomplishments are just unbelievable. Uh, where did you go to culinary school at? Uh, in the U.S.? Uh, well, well let, let's expand on that. It's yes, in the United Art States Institute. first. Where? In the Art Institute of Atlanta in the U.S. And I took some, uh, the crossover classes from La Varanne in Paris, France. Oh, okay. So how long did you get to spend in Paris? So, uh, well, I lived in Europe, what, three years, Mom? Yeah. Three years. have to ask my mom. She's in here with me. <laughs> <laughs> What's Mom's name, Tina? <laughs> Sherry. We might just bring her in. We might just we might just get Bobby, Mom, and them, everybody in Tina's bedroom. We'll, have a big, we'll just <laughs> have a big <laughs> talk. <laughs> I think Bobby's eating dinner. Okay. At, which, when you first tried to call me, I was cooking dinner. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. And, and then uh, Cody's in there with him because if you're eating, he's with you. So. Oh, okay. Now Cody's the dog, or is that child? Yes, my my fur baby. <laughs> okay, he's the animal. Okay, he's not a child. Okay. He is a child. But <laughs> he's a fur. He's a fur child. Okay. Now you said it was fun. You liked working in. Uh, did you work in restaurants? Where'd I you have. Work? Where'd you work? Now What's I your work favorite work. restaurant job? What's your favorite I restaurant? At Mills on Wheels of Coweta now, I where I that. cook mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> a yeah. lot of food. I, but where did where was your favorite restaurant that you worked at in, in the Atlanta area, or in the Atlanta? Noonan or the Noonan Georgia area? What month restaurant? Um, it was in Buckhead in Atlanta, called, and it was a restaurant that was called La Crocodile. It was a fr very very upscale white tablecloth French restaurant. Mm -hmm. And what did you do there? I was chef de cuisine. Okay. And that is for us non-chef people. Uh, like second in charge. Okay. Yeah. So you're when he yells, he yells at you, then you turn around and yell at everybody else. Yeah. Or hmm? she. Or yeah. she. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. Get you're that right. right. I will. I will. <laughs> uh, you said that you uh, love people, cook them tasty food, and uh, since 2009, you've been one of the few female pitmasters to compete in the Southeast, which is true. Now. In 2015, you uh, won the Georgia Barbecue Championship. Yep. And that's a and that's a big deal. That's it a, was to me. It, it's a big deal to everybody that wins it, because it is a big deal. You're talking. You're in the category of um, uh, Tina Cannon, the Mixons, um, Stump, uh, Robbie Royal. I mean, that's you're in some you're in some rarefied air down there. <laughs> because there are some there are some serious barbecue cooks in Georgia, and then on uh, was it the same year uh, you were on the Travel Channel's American Grilled? Yeah, I think that was 2014. I think, or it might be 15 that I was on American Grilled. Yep, I actually left a contest and drove straight from a contest to compete in that television show. And I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw American Grill, but 
We went through a lot of this on the post on Facebook today, Tina, spoiler alerts. I didn't realize that some people had not watched the American Barbecue Showdown all the way through. And, and we caught a little bit of flack for telling who won before they got to watch. So spoiler alert, she won the American Grill Show too back in 2014. Okay. Yeah. I think we, we might have filmed in 2014 and it aired in 50. Really, mm -hmm. I can hardly remember. But uh, yeah, that was exciting. I won $10,000 on that show. Yeah, and that was a great, great series, too. That was one of my all time favorites. You had your Papa's skillet that you made famous. Yes. That, you, that you keep with you all the time. I do. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, you were, I mean, you were like, you were like the. The country bumpkin on that show, and you just <laughs> outcooked everybody. All the men, Jack Waybore was on there. Uh, Will, um, what's Will's last name? Lives up here in Chattanooga. Um, you remember what I'm talking about Will? I forget his name. Uh, last I'm trying name. to remember his last name, and then um, a Do couple people that compete, you know, pretty regularly yeah. up in your area. Mm -hmm. Doctor Barbecue was a judge. I had some real yeah. famous judges on there. Great series, and I uh, wish it would bring that back. But but as you, you can still watch it on Amazon Prime, American Grilled, mm -hmm. and my episode was called Southern Char. Yep. D H A R. Mm -hmm. And didn't you cook against Jack Waybor in the last one? Wasn't he one of the uh, contestants? Yes. Yeah, well, he made it to the final round. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And he's and he's a he's a great cook and a great competitor too. And you That's won for sure. Yeah. And you won. So good for you back then. So. Um, you also won a grand championship in the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour, which yeah. is now which is now defunct. But it was a great it was a great tour while it was going on. And uh, you're also the World Food um, you won the World Food Championship Fire and Ice All Female Pitmasters Grilling Competition. Yep, and then in the regular category, I was reserved. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, and then my my husband was with me, so. We entered also in the uh, IBCA. We raked in about uh, twenty-seven thousand dollars at that particular contest. So we, that was a good payday. Yeah, that's good. that's not a uh, that's not a bad payday right there. And if and if you're watching, if you're if you're watching Tina right now, and, and there was a bunch of people watching Tina, um, and you say, "Man, she looks familiar. Where have I seen her before?" Bama Q. One of the stars of Bama Q. So, I don't know if star is oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're on it, you're a star. You and your husband, Bobby Cook, together as the pit crew. And y'all are a force in the southeast United States because that's where you cook mostly. But wherever you go, you're a force. <laughs> well, and, I appreciate that. <laughs> and I remember the first time we met down in Rome, Georgia, I was thrilled to death that you even came and spoke to my friend and I. Because I, I punched him, I was going, I was going. That's that girl from American Grill. That's her. And then, and then you walked over and, and said, "I've never seen y'all. Where y'all from?" And we, uh, 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 and you told us, "Well, good luck. Have a good time." And uh, we did good in that contest too. Yes, you did. And, I like to meet teams that I haven't haven't seen before. Wasn't that the where it rained and there was like a big mud fest on the other end of the? Yes. Where we. Yeah, yes, and that. it was. I was um, thankful I was on asphalt. On it was. Uh, Charlie Daniels was supposed to be there, and they canceled that. Everything yeah. was canceled except the barbecue contest. Well, we all persevere. We we are used to cooking in yeah. rain, sleet, and snow, I, hail, I hurricane. Know. I've even hooked, cooked in a hurricane out in Lyons, Georgia, a couple years ago. We were we were in the, the cook trailer and the uh, and the um, motorhome, so we we didn't care. We were we were we were set up really good. Okay, let's get to the American Barbecue Showdown. First, Tina, you won. Spoiler alert: She wins. It's episode eight: She wins. She takes Rashi to the woodshed, and she wins. <laughs> and we'll I don't get, feel like, like you saying that, but he, I won. Yeah. He will. He will. I mean, he. I promise there was, and you know better than I. There was not a happier person there that day than Rashid Phillips when you yeah, won. He was really, really, really sweet. I was so exhausted. Very gracious. When, uh, they filmed me and I basically fall on him. Yep. I was so exhausted. I'd been up like 30 hours straight, you know, and 
uh, shoveling coals and carrying yeah, blocks. Absolutely. <laughs> High well, energy inside, but I was exhausted. We're going to get to that in just a minute. First of all, how do they how do they contact you? Last week we spoke with uh, Georgia Chasen, and they and she said that they contacted her through Instagram. Now you got contacted on, on a different format, didn't you? Yeah, I was on uh, Facebook. I got a message, uh -huh. and I was like, thought it was a joke, really. And uh, I got a few messages back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then I said, call me from a real phone. You know, one, one that said Netflix. Because you know, <laughs> I, I, I didn't believe it. You know, and I, obviously from my technically technical difficulty of us trying to connect, you can see that I, I'm not great with all that. So the, I guess they had to find, you know, they all work remotely. They had to find the office phone to call me from before I would talk to them. And mm -hmm. then we talked. I, I have no idea how they really found me. I guess maybe World Food or send some other things that I have done. And then, um, you know, we, I, I actually figured out how that Skype. I had to figure out how to Skype because mm -hmm. I never had done that before. So we did an interview. And um, then they asked me to cook a bunch of stuff and take pictures of it. Let's talk and about that. go to a local pit master here in Noonan and take a bunch of platters and let you know, a male pit master the, let him taste everything all right hold on hold on hold on let's what? talk about that you had to take it to steve duncan owner of dunk's barbecue kitchen in noonan right how did you know that well i, I have my sources tell right. me tell me how steve got involved in your you know that? i don't know I, I don't know if netflix contacted him i i don't know but um i went there and evidently he liked everything <laughs> Well, this is what he says. He says that um, uh, the production company asked if he would try uh, some of Tina's food and let them know um, how it was. He told them that her barbecue was amazing and her personality was infectious. So Ooh. he obviously met you. Um, <laughs> and Steve went on to say that he was looking forward to watching the show. Then you had to take more pictures, cook more food, and keep sending them. Yeah, I just they gave me, I think, wet ribs, dry ribs, some type of like bodacious sandwich, a big barbecue platter of everything that I like. And I went overboard because I thought I don't know, so I cooked all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. and we ate well for a few days. Well, boy, that I had there, I had known him from a restaurant he had owned in another community uh, uh -huh. way on the other side of Atlanta. He had had a, a, a pretty big restaurant and I think they had a fire or something probably 20 years ago, I guess. But, and I remember when they sent me to him, I didn't realize where I was going and I recognized him immediately. I asked to make a couple pictures with him when I was there <laughs> and made some pictures of my platters. And, you know, I didn't know what he was going to say. You know, he could have told him, no, that I don't like her barbecue, you know. Well, right you know, he, if he didn't like you, you're not on the show. Right. I mean, if he I didn't if, know how significant yeah. that was when I went there, I just thought it was part of it. You know, Steve Duncan I says, going in wondering if there was cameras or anything. Yeah, Steve Duncan says, you know, Tina Can is not even. She's a, boop, you know, next. They may even call me. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> I doubt it. You know, there were 1,500 people they considered for this show. Did you know that? No, I yes. did not. You know more than I know. I didn't interview you. <laughs> I just, I've been talking to a lot of people. This, these, shows, these shows amaze me. All these, all the barbecue television amazes me there because I'm just a, a barbecue show junkie. I watch everything about cooking on uh, barbecue that I can. And me too. I know, it's good. It's fun. And, um... 15, out of 1,500 people, they got down to eight people. Now, tell me what it was like before when you went, when you went to Covington, to the enchanting, um, the enchanting site, uh, as it's called. What, um, what were, were you nervous that first day when you showed up, or how were you treated? How did you treat the other people? Or did you get to see every? Did you get to, like a mixer going on, or did they just? Say, everybody shake hands and let's go. <laughs> I remember when we first, we stayed in a hotel, all of us in the same, same building. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I recognized two people right off. 
and I was like really excited because I had, you know, Sylvie out of California, she yeah. and I have competed against each other at World Food a few mm-hmm. times. Right. Uh, and so I knew her. I was, you know, of course, neither one of us knew, you know, we were going to be there. And I knew Grubbs. You knew, and, you knew James? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And How'd you know him? The, um, from when I did American Grilled, he was actually the alternate. Oh, okay. They always, I guess, have someone in case someone doesn't, you know, perform well or freak out. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I had met him and he and I had remained friends okay. um, since then and kind of stayed in contact. Yeah. You know, when, you know, we watched each other online and stuff. Matter of fact, I wonder if he's watching, I want him to see something. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know if you can see my t-shirt. Wait, it says, it's a flu, it's a flu, it's a fluid situation. Yes. That's what it says. So he sent me that and a couple of other uh, ladies on the cast, that shirt afterwards. Cause you know, he's so upbeat, mm-hmm. you know, with changes in his life and his health. Yeah. He is the most positive person that I have probably met in a very, very long time. So there's a lot, when you film TV, there's a lot of stop, start, a lot of changes, weather, it rains, move over here, go over there. So he was, that was his saying. He was saying, you know, it's a fluid situation. <laughs> he just goes with it. So I thought it was so sweet. I got home from filming and I received this package in the mail. It was a t-shirt from him. It's a fluid situation. Yeah. So, and of course, you knew you knew Melissa. I'm sure you've competed oh, against her, haven't you? But we didn't find out who the judges were until, I guess, our first day of cooking. And when uh, she and Kevin walked out, I mean, you probably saw the expressions on our face. Yep. That was real. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, that is like, you know, for me, an idol. Because I remember when I met her when I was still cooking backyard in Jackson, Georgia. I was at a contest that was a um, MBN. Mm-hmm. Because that's, uh, you know, I cook MBN, FBA, GBA, you know, KCBS. Mm-hmm. So I cook IBCA. A lot of different, you know, regions that I cook in. So I recognized her from, you know, reading about her, seeing her on Pitmasters, of yeah. course. So I literally about fell out you know the old southern would say and i about fell out you know yep. so it was very exciting and and um even though you know i knew who kevin was from tv and a lot of things i guess you know i related to her because she's kind of who inspired me from when i first met her at that contest years ago yeah well, she... And she spoke to me and i remember oh my gosh you know i couldn't believe that she spoke to me and uh i don't even think she remembers it but uh we were um I was walking by, you know, at MBN, you have to, um, you know, kind of give a dog and pony show, you mm-hmm. know, to the judges. Uh-huh. And she was setting up her area and I saw her and I was just standing there watching her. And she took the time to walk over where she had a huge fenced in sight and uh, to talk to me. And like I said, I don't even know if she re- remembers that, but I was kind of in awe. And yeah. at that particular contest, I mean, I was in the backyard team at the time. Uh, and I won. So the, at the NBN, you won the backyard division. Yeah, I yep. did. Mm-hmm. I did. And uh, you know, I just thought she and Myron, y'all got congratulations from them. And for someone that's new at it, and just have seen them on TV, I was like in awe. Yeah. And I remember just remembering that moment when she walked out of that barn, and we found out who the judges were. And of course, I watched racing, so I knew who Rut was. Mm-hmm. So. I just was not familiar with Lyric, but of course I, you know, found out real quick. You know, I knew she was on TV and a comedian, but I didn't know all the other accomplishments she had. Yeah, well, I thought I thought the um, I thought all four of them blended well together. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was a I, I just think it was a it was a great series. Um, yeah, they were all four real different people, but mm-hmm. had you know definitely taste preferences and um, knowledge. You know, well, I think it's good when you've got Rudd's real like, you know, he's barbecue at comp, you know, at the races and things like that. And he's a very, very funny guy, like even off camera. Y'all think he's funny when you see him. He's hysterical. I mean, he would have you in stitches. Just his tone and his mannerism was funny and his crazy tennis shoes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And of course, we'll, we'll get to the first thing in case in case somebody has joined us and. 
uh, doesn't hasn't heard this question, I'm going to go ahead and ask it right now. What what was the deal with the clothes? They wore the same clothes in all all eight episodes. It, it, give me the abridged version because it's 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 it makes sense when you hear. It. Go ahead. Uh, well, the word that Netflix uses is continuity. Mm -hmm. All right. My my theory is: Did you watch Gilligan's Island? Yes, of course. Did anybody question why they wore the same thing? Never. Okay. Never. <laughs> So, is that a good enough answer? That's a, that, that's that's it's perfect. It's perfect, <laughs> and I could see them taking interviews from, like like when like all right at the beginning of the show, show number one, we have there's Melissa comes out and you, it's almost like the heavenly muse. That yeah. Here is the here is the greatest female barbecue person who has ever walked the face of the earth, and right. and she probably is, and and then and then they, they go to interview you. You're then you're interviewing. You're saying. Oh wow! I can't believe she's here. She's my idol. She. When did they do that interview? Was it that day, or was it like post production of the show? You know, gosh, I'm trying to remember because a lot of times the interview was like after. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that one was after the first round yeah. of cooking. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't give you exactly when because you know, remember this is. Over a year ago. Yeah, I know. It was I know. September a year ago. So I know that it was after, but I was still in awe, you mm -hmm. know, what I mean? until the very last day, you know. Yeah. So did the others, was after the first cook, did the other competitors realize your, did they know your pedigree? Did they know who they were up against? Well, I know Sylvie knew my background and mm -hmm. I knew Grubbs knew my background. Yeah. I mean, we ate together, breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. dinner, so we talked. Um, so, I I would assume I would assume so. I mean, yeah. I know that I would probably ask around and look somebody up, you know, mm -hmm. if I had a question, you know, about someone. But I would assume so. They knew I had competed, and well, we kind of talked yeah, openly about that. Yeah, because you in the southeast, uh, Sylvie in California is almost your mere image. I mean, she is, I mean, she's in rarefied air out in California yes, as, a, as a competitor is. Over in, in that, in that area. I mean, she is, uh, I mean, she's, she's awesome. And, uh, just as you're awesome in our area or wherever y'all go <laughs> or wherever she goes, cause look how far she made. All right. First yeah. show, first show, we'll, we'll go through the, the episodes as best I can recall. Um, first one was the, the sampler. Um, and when we were sitting there, I told when we when we started to binge on a Friday night, because we did four Friday, four Saturday, um, I told my family and my friends that were here, I said, I said, Tina's gonna nail this. I mean, this is this is <laughs> this is like this is like saying uh, you know, it's a it's a three and O count, here comes the fastball. And um, and uh, and you did. You 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 nailed it. Although Rashid won that that round or that that show. Um, your, I'm sure your, your food was, I'm, 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 what I'm saying is, were you comfortable with that menu? Oh, gosh, I was. Yeah. I was ready for them to throw whatever at me. I mm -hmm. remember uh, when I guess finally talked to them on the phone, they asked, you know, they did ask me had, had I cooked on different types of grills and never told me, you know, what kind or anything. And I made a joke. Uh, you can give me a piece of foil a piece of charcoal and a match and I'll cook you something. So, <laughs> Little did <yeah>. they know. <laughs> so, uh, I remember, I won't say that again if I interview for another show. <laughs> they might give me a match and a piece of charcoal. A piece they of about charcoal. did. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was ready for, for anything, not well, not anything, but, you know, normal food. I wasn't ready for some of them later on, but, you know, I was ready to, you know, cook what we know is barbecue, you know, brisket, yeah. you know, <laughs> pork butts, ribs, you know, chicken. Um, I was a little disappointed in the first episode that I wanted to cook a pork butt. Well, there was only the shoulders, which, you know, I could have separated mm -hmm. into smaller pieces. But when they gave us that short amount of time, I'm not a hot and fast cook. Anybody, right. and I know, you know, you know, I cook on a cabinet smoker and cook very low and slow. Mm -hmm. So, 
it was almost like a learning experience while I was there having to cook that fast. I don't have a timeline in my book that cooks hot and fast, mm -hmm. you know? So I just took, you know, what, what temperatures, what's my final mm -hmm. temperature for meat. And I knew we were cooking a better quality meat, uh, you know, also the marbling and everything. So I just took that into account. I said, okay, I'm just going to cook to temperature yeah. rather than by time. Like I usually do. And I guess it worked out. Right? Well, so you did pork belly, right? I, well, I did some pork belly. Yeah. I did, uh, I'm trying to think some other, gosh, I'd have to say, I think we did ribs. Mm -hmm. We had to do a whole platter. Yeah. And uh, in the in the episode, they kind of show, they showed my platter, mm -hmm. but also made beans from dry beans. Mm -hmm. I also made homemade pickled okra. I think I made a pie. I made biscuits. You know, I made like me on a plate, mm -hmm. basically how I described it. But they kind of just basically, you know, in editing, they take things out, you know. But I, I basically, they just talked mainly about the meat. But I made a lot of stuff in that short period of time. If you rewind it and take the picture and look at all the different dishes that are on there, I think I made at least six things. Yeah. And I can't remember. I don't even know if we had six hours. Y'all had, had, had a bunch of stuff to make. we had was six hours besides the last episode where we had more time tina when they when they give you the instructions and they, they say you know go is it is it really that is it really like a contest and it is they stick to six hours they don't say cut stop the clock and move people around and, and do stuff is it is it pretty much a full competition it, it's a full competition i mean sometimes that like when they came to look at our food mm -hmm. you know they would they would slow that down because, you know, they couldn't do it all at the same time. Right. right. So some of that would be a little bit different. We had a couple uh, weather delays mm -hmm. uh, where we had to relocate because we had a, where we had to kind of start over because we had a terrible storm where it was lightning and they had to move everything inside the barn when we were originally outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, you know, pretty much it, it was, it was online. I mean, it stayed stayed on course. Other mm -hmm. than you know, when they'd have to get the the close shots of the food, right? I mean, you know, what could you do with that? You know, mm -hmm. I hated if they if I was last to get the the cutaway shot of food, then that meant my food was cold. <laughs> yeah. So, but barbecue judges eat cold food all the time, right? Well, they have to. Yeah. Um, episode two, you won. Right. Correct. Yeah, I forgot what right. what did you cook in that one? I forgot. Uh, was that was that the lobster? No, no. Lobster. Was... I should have wrote all this down. Well, I had it written down, I, and it, it's at my I gas know. station. It's at my gas yeah. station. I, no, honestly, I can't remember. They're all like yeah. a, a blur to yeah. me. I've actually only had time to watch the episode now one time through, and I've started over. Mm -hmm. All right, in episode three was the um episode where nobody went home they they uh they said that that was when um oh i'm sure it was oh i can't remember but it doesn't matter uh nobody went home uh the big the big strong man went home first uh Shotgun. yeah boat right went home he second so much fun. i just loved him oh he was he was hilarious he was, they almost needed they almost when he was talking they almost needed you know, they almost need like a little subtitle, like, what do you say? What do you say? He, he yeah, talks so fast. Rhyme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was really, it was really neat. And, uh, of course, Bo, and then Bo Wright went second. Uh, third, nobody went. Fourth, uh, Georgia went. Uh, then we go fifth through eighth. Um, and that's when it really got down to the, the, not that the others weren't interesting, but I think the, uh, the cream obviously rose to the top. And yeah, I think that was it. Was Grubbs, uh, Sylvie, Rashid, and me. And uh, uh, the other guy, the, the car salesman. Um, oh, Ashley. Ashley, yeah, yeah, yeah Ashley. Um, the car salesman. Yeah. Then I think after that, I think, um, yeah, it's a fluid situation. Yeah. I think after that was Grubbs. Grubbs got bumped next, I believe. Then Ashley. Yes. Then. And then Sylvie, and then you and Rashid are left. Yes. 
Thank you. Yep, you're right. Yep, I, I think so. And uh, you did well, and I believe you you did really well on the sandwich episode, where. Yeah, but I didn't win. No, but you got automatically. You were safe though. Yes. So that's that's a win right there. I mean, you know, yeah. it's it's like like uh, Jim Valvano said, just survive and move on. It's like an NCAA. It's like an NCAA basketball tournament. It doesn't matter. You won. You know, you move on. And uh, so you get to the final episode. Did you have any idea that you're going to be doing a whole hog? No. And with your MBN background, I guess you may have had an edge up, would you say? No, no, because, you know, in the MBN, you don't have to do whole hog. Right. But had you ever it's, done one in MBN? Never. Oh, okay. Okay. I have, like, helped a team manage a fire mm -hmm. or... You know that type, or you know, feed a fire while they're sleeping. But I have never like had to cook one by myself. I, I think you said that in the episode, didn't yeah. you? Is the first time you'd I, ever done I may one. Have. I think you did. I think you did. Yeah. Thinking back on it, um, yeah. I, I thought it was really strange that y'all had to build the pits. Yeah, it was hard. But, yeah, it's hard. You know, I am so glad that you know Ashley was able to come back out. You know, to help with that, mm -hmm. those blocks were the head. You know, there's different like weights of cement, which I did not know because I have some cinder blocks here at my house, you know, to survive, you know, go around my garden bed. Mm -hmm. And I remember like when you go and buy the blocks, there's like two different weights. Okay. Well, I, didn't, I didn't know These that. were the heavier ones that were on the show. I can't remember if they showed me carrying them, but I remember uh, our COs, which are the people that kind of hang with you to make sure you don't. Mm -hmm. you know, go do something you shouldn't or yeah. drift offset or anything. I remember them laughing at me when we were on the van going back to the hotel saying, uh, it was hilarious listening to you on the earphones because you were huffing and puffing and huffing and puffing. Because they can hear you all the time. You're mic'd up from oh, when sure. you get up in the morning to when you go to your room at night. You know, they pretty much can hear everything. So did yeah. they give you directions on how to build this pit? No. They don't they just said there's there's a cinder blocks build it? Yes. You're and they, they didn't say here's you couldn't no. Google it or you no. couldn't you're kidding. No. no. I wouldn't I wouldn't so, know. you know, before I went on the show, I kind of like started reading about a lot of stuff. You uh -huh. know, like I tried to remember the questions they asked me in the interview. Mm -hmm. So I tried to study up on like everything that I thought that would be yeah. possibly thrown at you know, at me on the show. And, you know, and I'm, you know, I knew it was basically, you know, a rectangle and I knew you would have to put something to lay the, the hog on, but like doing the drafts and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love, I love Ashley, you know, Ashley and I are buddies, mm -hmm. um, but I probably would have built it different knowing that he was going to leave. You know, I didn't know he was not there all night with me, you know, right. or still we would be with Rashid. So I probably would have built it a little bit narrow. Mm -hmm. where I could reach, you yeah. know, across to flip it or something. I probably would have looked around a little more for some chicken wire, mm -hmm. um, you know, and some things like that. And I might have built it a little bit differently knowing I was going to manage it my, that night by myself. Would you may have, would you, looking back on, of course you won, so it worked, but would you have made the openings bigger to put yes. the, because they looked like they were small on television. I know you can't always... Mm -hmm tell but it looks like Rashid's were bigger than yours yeah. were yeah yeah mine was you know small like the size of a block yeah you know to to shovel you know coals underneath mm -hmm. um and, and they didn't really show it like i remember i had like dirt all over my knees and everything from laying down on the ground and literally like pushing coals and yeah. you know under the different parts you know under the shoulder or the hams you know where i wanted it mm -hmm. to get a little more cooked um, I was thankful that we removed the head because, um, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it would have been so much more heavier, mm -hmm. you know, to try to flip it. So really after he helped me flip it, mm -hmm. he was gone after that. So you were on your own. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, and you know, Rashid didn't need, I mean, of course, Sylvie's expertise in like prepping it, doing all that, you know, he was strong enough. I mean, he could yeah, get his all up and, you know, with one hands you know yeah he's, he's six huge. foot seven yeah he's huge know, so. and um but uh it was it was it was hard in strength but i think um 
if I were to build one on my own, and I do have a lot of cinder blocks here, maybe one day <laughs> I'll do that. Um, I'll build just a little bit narrower and I will leave those openings a little bit larger and I might just slide a block in and out to keep the heat, you know, mm -hmm. to cover the holes. Um, would you have put a piece of, would you, would you put a piece of wire so it would have been easier to flip? I, yes, on a I second would. Time. You know, I don't remember seeing the chicken wire. If you watch the episode really close, I don't remember seeing the roll, but it was dark. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. when, by the time the, the hog was prepped, you know, it, it, I don't remember seeing one. And since I'm not experienced enough, I should have thought about that. I mean, I've watched enough pit masters and stuff, but, yeah. you know, we're doing all the other stuff in there yeah. on top of it. And I guess it just totally slipped my mind. So while the, so while the, the pig is being cooked, you're mm -hmm. having to go into the, I guess, into the barn. Is that where the kitchen was set up? Yes. And it do all the... I'd say a good 30 or 40 yards from my cook site. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there was more than one cook site. Right. And mine was in the very back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so right, yeah, I ran back and forth. You know, I have to run two steps to Rashid's one. So I felt yeah. like I was following him all the time. Yeah. Did um, did you feel intimidated there at the, at the final episode when it was, you know, mano y mano, the whole hog on the cinder block pit, which is... No, well, that, that you didn't. You said, no. I got this. Not at all. Good for you. Because you I, know I cook in contests all the time now, mm -hmm. you know, since yep. two, the end of 2009. So if I was intimidated at all, I would never, I wouldn't even compete. Right. So right. I didn't feel that at all. You know, he was such a kind person. Mm -hmm. So intimidation wouldn't be, even though he's a big, strong guy, you know, I didn't feel that at all because he was just such a kind person well i think he was he was the the perfect uh, i think the, the perfect big person that they were looking for a, a good looking strapping young man um who is uh with a with a bit of an accent um and who is extremely nice uh you know his demeanor was it, it seemed at least on television it seemed like he was very nice i know he may you know out in real life who knows but, no, uh, no, he was like that because, you know, when we were not on camera and not mic'd up, you know, we all had to eat together, mm -hmm. have breakfast together, dinner. No, he he was just that way. He's just, I, I don't know how many times I told him his mother, you know, <laughs> must be proud. Mm -hmm. Mom, get my phone cord in there. <laughs> Your mama must be proud. Yes. And, um, and so he, he's in Atlanta now. He's doing his thing. Um, so let's, let's, get, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go to... I want you to watch and then I want you to comment on this after we watch it. This is this is Tina uh, describing her final dish to the judges. Pinto beans, some cream corn with a little bit of spice, and then uh, macaroni and cheese with Ritz crackers and peach cobbler with buttermilk for the crust. So do you see all those things on that yeah. platter? Yeah. They, there's a lot more things than they talked about. So I don't know if anybody can hear the sound the or that, but part there was cobbler. Hang on, hang on. Maintaining the integrity of the loin. And you nailed it, girl. Wow. I can hardly even find it. I just, last minute, I think, oh, here it is. I finally fixed it. I'm glad you found it. That was that was Tina telling you, you know, I knew it was uh oh she went away. Where did she go? Why'd she do that? You still there? Yes. Turn your camera back on. You turned your camera off. Okay. I don't know why you did that. There you I are. Okay, I was there you actually are. trying to plug in my phone for it went Oh, that's okay. Um <laughs> that um that was Tina telling you that how well you did on the loin of the whole hog because apparently in in the whole hog business that that is something that the judges all want to taste and that's like the most important part of the animal to be sampled is that correct yes okay and you know everybody has kidded me because i could not find the loin that i was looking for the tenderloin to turn in yeah uh, and you know 
I can look at a map of an animal from the side and tell you where all the parts are. Mm -hmm. But then when you cut it in half and lay it open, because of my lack of experience with hogs, I had to actually film a feel for it. Yeah. Because when I prepare meat, like at, at work, at Mills on Wheels, you know, I have to cut, you know, down large cuts of meat, usually beef. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell by the feel of the muscle what it is. So, you know, they don't, you don't get to say that on the show, but I'm like, literally, I was lifting under the ribs to try to feel for that texture of the meat. Oh, it showed it's that. so funny at the very last minute when I said, I found it. That was, that was, le that's legit. That mm -hmm. was not TV land there. I grabbed it and literally ran and put it on my platter. Well, it was, it was an impressive uh, final video. Now let's let's play the. Let me see. I hope this part is better than the last one. It's hard okay. getting. It's hard getting this. Now just watch this and listen. This is the. This is the. Uh, and the winner is. So here we go. It really is neck and neck. But what it ultimately came down to was the brisket. Barbecue in America is Congratulations Tina <laughs> Here's your reaction There you go There you go mm. That. I'm American Barbara. He's a big look old how, guy. Look how sweet his face was. Oh, I, mean, I know. I don't know if you could tell. I mean, y'all don't know him, but you could tell we were both very tired. Sure. Um, and you know that that very morning, I was in the kitchen. I cannot remember. I think I was actually making my mom's cobbler pie recipe. Mm -hmm. and putting it in the oven you didn't see that my oven was off so I was like work I mean I had to start over and let it preheat so I was like oh my gosh and I remember when I was mixing the batter of that pie I looked up I don't know if you know in the show that big fan you saw in some uh -huh. of the angles I looked out that window where that big fan the wall fan was and I realized it was daylight oh really so, I had no idea. So you can imagine by the time we did the tasting and, you know, did our platters to take over for the judges, how exhausted I was extremely exhausted then. And when I was like leaning on him, you know, of course they don't, they didn't put everything in the show. I was leaning on him because I was so tired. Did, how long was it after y'all, after the, the time up, the time is up, mm -hmm. how long did it, was it between the time is up and for them to film and shoot the and the winner is segment on it right there we watch I, I would be a good guesstimate i would say was probably an hour so not very long time, there is a scene uh, they may have shown us that rashid and i went over with our co's and we sat in the bed of an old pickup truck that was on set while the judges talked mm -hmm. and then the judges i believe went inside because it was really hot yeah. And we just sat there and it was so strange while we sat there, we got up because they were going to call us and there was a snake Ooh. right, literally right below where that, the bed of the truck. And of course I jumped back up in the truck, <laughs> Rashid's back up in the truck and our, and one of the producers was there with us and they called, I don't know, wildlife wrangler or something. <laughs> Cause on set of these big shows, they have medics, yeah. they have wildlife people, everything came over and I think dispatched it. I mm -hmm. guess that's the new word now because yeah. he used it on the show. Yeah. I didn't know whatever word to use. <laughs> uh, it was a copperhead. Oh. So all the people watching this show don't get upset if a snake was taken out, but it was like right in the area where there's lots of people. And there mm -hmm. was hundreds of people on set, you know, in the crew all the time. So I, I, think, they ta I think they dispatched it. And then, you know, we all were, you know, sat down and calmed down from the snake. And then they called us back over to the table. When they announced that, that was not filmed more than once. That was a hundred percent reaction. How, um, how long did it take? How long were you 
at the enchanting uh, site, start to finish. Oh, with, oh, oh, with the big uh, barn? Yeah, the, the, the site I, where y'all were. I think I came home. I think they drove me home, actually, because they picked me up mm -hmm. and dropped me off at home. You know, they didn't want family. Right. Nobody got to visit anything. I think I came home. Was on the 20th day, Mom? I believe it was the 20th day. Wow. So it takes that yeah. long to do eight to do eight eight episodes. Yeah. But you know, there's um you know, there's dark days for the crew mm -hmm. that they get off, they only work so many hours. Because mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't realize, we may not be there, but they're filming other stuff. Right. You know, all those cutaway stuff where they show the kitchen and and different things. Yeah. Or maybe they're filming with uh the judges or with Rut things like that, that when we're not there. And then the interviews, you know, we were in the slaughterhouse of this cattle farm. That's where those interviews took place. And we could not all be there at the same time because mm -hmm. I think they wanted candid conversation, yeah. you know, with each one of us. So, um, you know, one would go and the car would bring them back and then the next person would go. So that takes a long time when you start with eight people, you know, to do those interviews. Yeah. Sometimes... Their interviews took a very long time. I don't think I was ever in there less than an hour every single time. Mm -hmm. if so not more. You don't have watches or anything, so you're not really sure. But I can tell you, sometimes it was getting dusk, and I was ready to get out of that slaughterhouse. Yeah, time you were tired, ready to go. Home. <laughs> bad, and I just don't want to hang out in the slaughterhouse at night. You know? Yeah, that's true. Um, other than uh, obviously, other than winning the entire thing. What was the high point for you in the series? Oh. Gosh, I you know, not including winning, but I remember gosh, you know, I made seven I made you know seven friends, even though I knew two of them mm -hmm. would be a highlight. Uh, just experience you know, I didn't even have Netflix before this. So You're I kidding. Made, no. You didn't have Netflix? No. Oh my god. I do now. I, do <laughs> I hope. Now. I hope. They should have they should have given it to you, but other than that. <laughs> that would have been good. Yeah, that would have been nice. Gosh, I'm trying to think. I think after each when you got back to your hotel room at night, mm -hmm. sitting there and thinking, I did that. You know, it's almost like a dream in a way that all that happened mm -hmm. but the accomplishment of saying gosh i just cooked a pork butt in five and a half hours you know yeah. it was something i never thought i would do so it was more of the inner accomplishment and and now after the fact it's um so many people have written me have you know and 99.999 all good you know, uh -huh. people from all over the world, not just the U I mean, U.S. I mean, all, I mean, everywhere you can think of. Um, some of them I have to push the translate button, you know. Oh, my gosh. Um, have written me to congratulate me. Women, like how, you know, how they felt I represented them. Mm -hmm. um, very, very positive comments, though. But in, in retrospect, it was probably every evening when I went back to our room when we were finished thinking what I had just done. Were y'all allowed to hang out together after the after the shooting was done for the day? Were y'all allowed to yes. talk? Yes. We all and... went out to eat dinner together. Uh -huh. You know, we had to do everything together. If we were too tired, which there was a couple times, you know, that we might have been. I can think of one time for sure mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we would order and they'd bring our food to the room. But we couldn't go anywhere unless right. they were with us. Because we did a Walmart run. <laughs> Because, you know, I wanted some something to drink. Mm -hmm. wanted, you know, they kept, you know, water and all that in our room. But I love that drink called Bubbly, you know, the, the water. Yeah. So I'd go get that or I needed, you know, mascara. I ran out of <laughs> mascara. So they, and that, they took us to the store and did a Walmart run. And, you know, they stay with you where you can get, you know, anything that you may need. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my tennis shoes. And this may be TMI, especially since my mom's here. Mm -hmm. uh, I had those red little tennis shoes on and you know, I didn't realize I was going to be traipsing through, you know, carrying logs and stuff like that. Those shoes stuck so bad, y'all. It was like a boy's, you know, summer cap. It was mm -hmm. terrible. And, um, I mean, it was bad. Yeah. 
No, they bought me. I guess they had them shipped the next day, so I would have some titty shoes to wear. Now oh, how funny! Took care of them. But they might have did that for the people that had to ride in the van. With them. <laughs> it, it, was, it was terrible, you know. The other, the other seven, the other seven competitors were watching, and they said they didn't do it for you, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, may not they did it for us because it was terrible. And I have a picture that I actually, you know, we couldn't have cameras and stuff, but I had someone make of me near the end where I'm holding my nose mm -hmm. and I'm throwing the shoes in the trash can on set. Uh, I have it. I don't know if I have permission to to post that yet or not. I'm going to check and post that picture because it was it was bad. It was bad. Did they did they make you like a souvenir um, DVD? I know they don't do DVDs anymore. There are a little film where they sent to you and say, "Hey, thanks for participating. Here's a no. memento." Mm -mm. They didn't. No. no. They said so. After it was over, it was thanks for coming, y'all. We'll see you. Don't say nothing, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know, I did um, hear from them about, I think I only found out, what, two and a half weeks, Mom? Mom. Huh? Yeah, two and a half weeks. Yeah, my mom's right here. She's, she's uh, Sherry. Sherry. Yeah, yeah Sherry. Sherry. Yeah. Sherry's here. Um, about two and a half weeks before they aired it, I finally got a call from them. You know, I got a couple emails, like at random, that it was editing. Uh -huh. You know, they didn't know. And I'm not sure why. You know, it was delayed so long, maybe COVID, you know. I'm I, sure it I, was, I, yeah. Everything's COVID's fault. But yeah. anyway, um, and so I didn't have time because y'all launched a website pretty recently. Matter of fact, I haven't even uh, loaded my content in because I just mm -hmm. filmed some videos. I had a, a crew here filming some cooking yeah. videos. And my mom's in one of them, right, Mom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, and that wasn't planned. It just happened that, you know, that she ended up, we cooked together one of the recipes I did on the show, but, uh, or I would have launched that site earlier, you know, yeah. I'm not very technical. So of course I had to get somebody to kind of do it for me. Um, but about two and a half weeks before. So I thought, Oh my gosh. And, uh, you know, I, I was going out of town on the day, actually the week before they were going to launch the show and we had already paid for, it was our vacation, you know, mm -hmm. we rented a house uh, down in the Destin, Fort Walton area. Mm -hmm. So we get down there. And of course, while we were down there, I don't know if everybody remembers, uh, a hurricane came in. Yeah. Sally. Yeah. yeah. So Sally hit while we were down there trying, and we were going to watch, you know, the show down there when it aired. Well, our power went out. Oh. <laughs> I know. So I was like, ah, you know, uh. watch it. Well, my husband, Bobby, has a, a cousin that lives actually in Fort Walton. Well, mm -hmm. they had power. And I, at the time, had internet. Well, here it is during a hurricane. Y'all you know, were driving to Fort Walton. Okay. <laughs> no, we didn't drive. It was like, was it the next day after it hit? Mom? Okay. So we went over to their house, and then their internet's down. Well, you can't watch it if your TV's on, you know. Right. So then, to watch the show, we she called her stepson and they had internet and they had power. So then we drove over there and we got to watch it. And they were like part, it was a party at their house. So uh -huh. we really didn't get to watch it because they were having a really good time. Uh, you know. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. stuff. So we didn't really get to watch it close. So we had three, I think three episodes on there. So we got back in the car, drove all the way back to Destin, but we still didn't have power. So we had to wait till we got back from our trip, you know, let the, you know, the hurricane finish and then mm -hmm. drive back and then watch it. Well, that, 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 that's a, that's a, that would be, that'd be torture. Tina it was, Cannon, it was hard. you're, you're great. I just, I just can't thank you enough. I know this is your second visit here too. I don't know if you remember last year, you were nice enough to be on the show with me and uh, this is your second visit and I appreciate you coming on. Congratulations. Well, Say what? and barbecue stick together absolutely and, and you've been a good friend to me and uh and i just i was just so happy that you you went all the way and you won it but i was happy you know that that kind of show you're happy for everybody and and a little bit of sad when you know when when the people did leave you like oh boy that's, that's tough uh, and that was real yeah when you saw that that was real that um you know we didn't win money for that show a lot of people don't realize that there was no prize. Mm -hmm. The prize was we gained seven good friends 
a very, very good experience. And some people are probably able to launch some other things, yeah. you know, based on, you know, the experience. Sure, there. sure, who knows sure. Who will call you? I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, I, you know, started a new website. Am I allowed to say? Absolutely. You can. All right. It's uh, Tina Cannon Cooks. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. And, and you'll if have... you have any questions, you can reach me on Instagram or Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, about the show or about some of the recipes. But on the net site, we just filmed just this past weekend, but they're in editing right now. We're going to do some of the recipes from the show and then some of the things that I just like to cook. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you so much. We're going to run. I just can't thank you enough for being on the show, Tina. You're wonderful. Thank and you. Uh, you bet. And, I'll, and, I'm, and I know we'll talk soon. Thanks, okay. Tina. You bet. Bye. Tina Cannon. How about that? How about that? Tina Cannon live on the Owl's Nest barbecue show. What a great person. What a great guest. Everybody, thanks for watching. Now, next week, James Grubbs will be here live on the Owl's Nest barbecue show. Uh, the person that Tina knew and uh, made it through, I think, five episodes. And James will give us his take on being on the American Barbecue Showdown on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It is a good show. You will enjoy it. I also want to thank real quick, uh, CJ from The Hot Seat. Uh, he is on um, YouTube Thursday nights, CJ, Cooking with CJ. Uh, matter of fact, he is on tonight in about 55 minutes. You can catch him on YouTube Live. I was on that show last week with him. Great, great host. He and uh, Kent, Daddy Dutch, they do a good job. It's fun. They're funny guys. Uh, their, their banter is just off the wall. And if, um, if you want a funny little show, that's it. CJ, cooking with CJ. And also, I want to thank Ryan and Matt from Barbecue Talks. Uh, I was on their show last Friday. Uh, it airs live from England at 430 Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. You can catch it on YouTube as well. And uh, we, will, we will reciprocate with CJ, Daddy Dutch, Ryan, and Matt for future shows. Remember, next Thursday, it's Grubbs from the American Barbecue Showdown. Everybody, thank you for watching and thank you for listening. And as always, good night and good luck. <laughs>